Good morning. Uh, today is, uh, what is it today? Today is uh, August 27th. August 27th, almost September. It's amazing how uh, time flies this year and uh, uh, what a blessed day it is as we uh, continue to dwell in God's word. And uh, I think at the end of the day, this is, uh, this is such an important time as we continue to be centered as we live in this life in the midst of this dark world uh, it is by this very word that well it really clarifies and gives us the the faith perspective to which we live move and have our being and uh, uh, I know a lot of things are going on in this world today and a lot of groanings and and uh, you know the, the birth pains as we see uh, of as we live in this anticipation of the Lord, all these things happening, um, it always reminds me that reminds me of my foundation and reminds me of the spiritual things. It reminds me of the truth that is in God's Word and, well, that clarifies all the things as we continue to uh, run the race and proclaim the word and, and boldly confess the Christ at the, end of the end of the world at the end of the day the everyone needs Christ no matter if they know it or not they need to hear Christ everyone everyone needs to hear this and uh, uh, you know we are here uh, continually proclaiming that word but I just pray uh, for our world this day that we uh that we continue uh, to to not only dwell in the word, but also um, have this message be sent forth, uh, because this world is hurting, and though there are many suggestions and and, and, and movements and and if we just did this, if we just did that, at the end of the day, this is a problem of of evil. Right? This is a problem of, of pain and suffering and, and the problem ultimately of the sin condition that all of humanity has <clears throat> inherited from their from our first parents. And um, you know, how do we combat that? How do we combat the problem of evil? And of course, the forces of darkness, and that is the word, that is Jesus. All right, let us begin this day with a word of prayer. This is the Collect of the Day uh, for the upcoming Sunday. Uh, blessings to you this day as we uh, uh, continue. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, and thank you for joining me uh, whenever you are listening. Uh, blessed, uh, blessed are you, and, and, and I pray that the Lord's blessings uh, may be with you as you continue uh, to be rooted uh, in who you are, as a child of God. All right. Um, let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Matthew, good morning, Mary. Matthew 26, or not Matthew 26, Matthew 16. Yes, he says. That's right. Verses 21 to 28. Why don't we read this together? Matthew 26, sorry, Matthew 16, 21 to 28. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must, that it is necessary to, to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. 
For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or, or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming to his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right. So, Matthew 16, 21 to 28. Uh, the upcoming uh, Gospel reading for this Sunday. Now, it's always good to prepare, as I say. Uh, I don't know if you've done it before, but I think it's a good exercise. Is to read the readings always a week before or prior before Sunday because when you hear them again on Sunday it, it really does uh, uh, take on a different tone you're you're well read in it you're prepared for it and you're not uh, thinking about in a sense wait what what did we just read right it's a it's a, a, def, a definitely good uh, habit exercise to read the text before Sunday and that's what I try to do here at least with the gospel text of the week uh, the other text Romans 12 also uh, Romans 12, 9 to 21, also um, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 15, 15 to 21. So what's happening here? Uh, Jesus is foretelling his death and resurrection. Now, of course, uh, this is the will of God. The will of God. Now, the will of God. I think really, uh, catechetically speaking, when we say, Thy will be done in the Lord's Prayer, uh, we very well know what does that mean, that God, uh, that He breaks and hinders the forces of darkness, and that He uh, grants to us uh, the comfort of salvation, that He leads us by His very Word, that His will be done in our life, and that will is the Word uh, that continues to comfort you in this Gospel. Now, when we talk about the will of God, uh, there is nothing that can in a sense, as we see Peter here trying to do, uh, what is he trying to do? He's saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now, what does that mean? What is Peter really saying there? Now, I know he, from a human perspective, is like, no, you're not, Lord, you're not going to die. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to be killed and, and betrayed in the hands of men. That, that's just not, that's not, I'm not going to let that happen to you. And I think, uh, when well, we talk about Peter's uh, word right here in verse 22, um, you know, uh, I know uh, from a human standpoint, this is a die on the cross is is one of great humility, uh, one that uh, you know the Lord from a human perspective. I mean, we see Peter at the Transfiguration, you know, setting up the the tents, uh, and, and we see it right here too, like. Actually, we see it, you know, even in the future where he says, you know, I will, I will drop everything and I will die for you, right? Uh, you know, from a human standpoint, Peter continues uh, to, to think, well, what is best for the Lord by his own will? This is very paradoxical in a sense where when we see someone lifted high upon the tree, tradition would say that that is not a place. As it says, cursed be those that... Are lifted high upon the tree, uh, Galatians three, and uh, an allusion to the Old Testament there, and um, you know it's a reminder to Peter as well. This is not going to happen to my Lord, right? And from his human lens, what's Jesus's response? Get behind me, Satan! You are a hindrance to me, a scandal on a, a scandal to me. You are uh, trying to be a stumbling block to me, right? For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And that is the key tension here. I, you know, when we talk about our lives uh, as we live in this day and age, can you, can you weave through that? The things of God and things of man. Do you, are you able to discern what is really going on there as you're weaving through constantly? Right? Left and right. 
the thoughts of man and, and, and our own will be done rather than God's will be done. You see that tension where it's like, you know, I, I live by God's word, yet I live by the world and, and how we get so distracted and confused and, and, and soon enough it becomes a blur and, and, and there, we, there we go on the ways of the thinking of man. I think uh, as we go through this world today, as we see all the things on the news and, and all the uncertainty and all the unrest and all these things that are happening, I mean, it's easy to kind of go into that rabbit hole of the things of man and to think that we are only living in human thought or in the way of man and, and soon enough we find ourselves failing to see and, and dwelling upon the things of God right this thing of God is the gospel here the will of God the will of God is to die for you it, it is to rise on the third day for you the will of God is to set you free from sin death and the power of the devil Now that's by way of the cross. The world says that is the most humiliating way. No one wants to be on the... After all, there you see the criminals there. These are people who committed heinous crimes. Being on the cross, that is not where the world, the human thinking would want to be. And this is the paradox. You see it, right? The Christ who bore our sins took upon that curse of our sin. He loves you so much and by his mercy... He goes to the cross to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the sacrifice for your sins. Now, this is the paradox I, I, I find, uh, you know, with the world's perspective of how they saw the cross, but yet from the will of God's perspective, how he sent his son to die on that very cross, because this is the will of God. Yes, he was betrayed into the hands of men, but Jesus very well knew this. It's interesting because, you know, right up to his betrayal, he didn't find a place where he could hide. He, he was... He was uh, dwelling with his, uh, with his disciples in a very frequented place. It wasn't something that he was trying to, um, you know, even Peter uh, cutting off the ear of Malchus, right? Uh, you know, he says, put that down. It's time. It's time to go. Go where? To the cross. Jesus willingly went. Because this is the thing of God. Right? The paradox. Why would the Lord die for sinners? They don't deserve it. They didn't achieve it. They didn't earn it. Why would he do it for free? Sorry about that. Um, and uh, that again is the paradox. I think in the world today, when we talk about the gospel, it is for you. Jesus forgives you of all your sins. And this is something that is so foreign to us because we're always thinking through the things of man and our own, our own thoughts, and we fail to see um, how the will of God really does deliver. And I think, honestly, uh, uh, for all of people who are dealing with their own guilt, and it, this is real. Like, why would God forgive me for all that I've done? And um, I don't deserve it. I, for a sinner like me, why would God do that? Don't I have to be better? Don't I have to earn my way? Don't, you know, don't I have to kind of step up, and then God will forgive me? No. God forgives you because this is the thing of God, the gospel. Right? So anyways, as we uh, continue on that theme of the paradox, we see another paradox here uh, about self-denial, denying ourselves and taking up the cross. And this is the tension that we see in our lives, right? We, we, we don't want to deny ourselves, right? We want all of ourselves, don't we? And we, and we see how this manifests itself that Jesus is uh, closely telling them. And I love these verses because I think this is, it really brings out the tension and it brings out repentance in our lives. Like, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? So again, you know, for whoever would save his life will lose it. You know, if, if we're living a life of of uh, if we if we see our lives in a sense where this life that we have, um, this life, this human life, this temporal life, if this is it, right, and we just kind of continue to feed and feed and feed and hunger and hunger and thirst and thirst for all the temporal satisfactions, uh, securities of this world, and, and this is what the world does, right? That's the paradox, isn't it? The world says what? Feed your life. Get more, more, and more. Because there you'll find your prosperity. There you'll find your uh, uh, your uh, 
your security uh, there. The world will adore you because of, of how much you have, right? The paradox is this. Though that is the quest for this world, to find their way in this world, Jesus says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Right? And this is the paradox. Because the things of God says what? Follow me. Deny. Deny yourself and, and take up your cross. And that life is does have suffering in, in the life of a Christian, right? In that life, we face so much with sin death, uh, the, uh, sin and, and the flesh and the world and, and the devil. I mean, it's so easy to just be part of the world and say, you know, I'm just going to take, take, take and, and live my life and say, these are the idols that are before me and uh, these things will save me. And from the eye perspective, from the human eye perspective, it looks very attractive, doesn't it? Very tempting. Right? Worldly adoration for all you have. People adore you. Uh, you might have these things in your retirement and, and all these things are set up. Your grain houses, metaphor of grain houses are set up in your heart and mind. And you feel like you're at peace because you have these things. But what we fail to see in that tension is that actually we're, we're, we're placing our faith in these things and we're actually losing our life. Right? Um, and, and what will profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? And when we speak of, again, the things of God and the things of man, this is the great uh, continuous tension that we all face as we meet the days ahead. Things of God and the things of man. And to apply this for you, um, I think it's good that you uh, really pray and pray that God will give you the wisdom and the discernment by the power of the Holy Spirit to really navigate through this world in that tension, right? I don't know how many times I catch myself thinking with the things of man. Um, but it's through the word, through the faith, that God has given to each of us, that we pray and, 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 and lean on his word and, and pray that the Lord may give us the wisdom and strength to meet the days ahead as we see spiritually what is really going on uh, uh, through, his, through his word, right? And this is the tension I think I see with Peter and even the disciples. You know, what do we do? Things of man or things of God. And at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, when we, we know that we fall short, of course, there is only the things of God. And the things of God is his will. And his will is Jesus. No one will deter the plan and will of God for you. The things of man will flutter and fall away. The things of God are eternal and here to stay. All oh, that rhymed, right? <laughs> but that is so true. So remember that this day, if you're struggling with the things of man, and you're coveting, or you're distracted, or, or you're so focused on the ways and things, and, and the ways of man, and the world, and the flesh, this is the text to which we remind ourselves, and we repent. And there we rest on the things of God. And that is the gospel. That is, that is the will of God, to go to the cross and die for us. So remember that this day as we prepare for Sunday. Um, Matthew 16, 21 to 28. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. The things of God or the things of man. Tension, tension, tension. Weaving, weaving, weaving. Praying being in the word, repenting, resting in. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thy will be done. Right? All right. Why don't we stop there this morning? I think that's good. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for this day, O Lord. Lord, we know that you have called us to 
deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow you. But grant us strength to do this in the life of faith. Please forgive us when our covetous flesh desires the things of this world. Bless us in the things of God, knowing full well that your very thing is the blood on the cross. Bless us, guide us, and continue to comfort us in your promises, knowing full well that you willingly and faithfully went to the cross to be our Redeemer King. Bless us this day and lead us always by your love and grant us your wisdom to meet the day ahead as we see through your word. Lord, for all these things we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Well, have a good rest of day, everyone, and God's blessings to you. And may this word go well with you. Until next time, adios and goodbye.